There are over 700 named muscles in the muscular system, with a combined weight of about 50% of our total body weight. Each muscle is its own organ constructed of muscle tissue, blood vessels, tendons, and nerves. Muscles aren't found on just your skeleton. There are muscles in your heart, your stomach, and your blood vessels. The muscular system serves four purposes, which are First, movement of the human body, which means doing every movement we do consciously from eating to writing to sports. Two, movement of substances throughout the body, meaning moving blood throughout our blood vessels and food throughout our digestive system. Third, posture and body position, how we sit versus how we stand. And fourth, generation of body heat, keeping us warm. There are three types of muscles in the body. Visceral muscles, or the mu muscles in our digestive systems and blood vessels. Cardiac muscles, or the muscles in our hearts. And skeletal muscles, or the muscles on our skeletons. Let's start with visceral muscles. These are the muscles that are located in our stomach, intestines, and blood vessels. They are our weakest type of muscles, as they only have to move substances throughout the organism. Visceral muscles are involuntary as they are controlled by the unconscious part of the brain. They are called smooth muscles because they appear, appear both smooth and uniform when inspected under a microscope. Next, we have cardiac muscles. These live in the heart and are responsible for pumping our blood throughout the heart. They, too, are involuntary, as they are controlled by the unconscious part of the brain. Our heart's natural pacemaker is cardiac muscle tissue that simulates other cardiac muscle systems on contact. Unlike visceral muscles, they are striated. This means they have light and dark stripes when viewed under a microscope. Cardiac muscle cells are X or Y shaped cells connected by special connectors called intercalated discs. These are finger-like projections that hang out from the two closed cells and lock them together. The strength of the intercalated discs help them resist high blood pressures and the strain of pumping blood through the heart and means that electrochemical signals can spread quickly through the heart so the heart pumps as a unit. Finally, we have skeletal muscles. These are the only voluntary muscles in the human body, and every physical action that a person consciously performs, for example speaking, walking, or writing, requires skeletal muscle. Most skeletal muscles are attached to two bones, so they con contract to move bones closer or farther away from one another. There are many diseases afflicting the muscles. However, the main three are 1. Muscular dystrophy 2. Amyotrophic lateral sclerosis and 3. Myasthenia gravis First, we have muscular dystrophy. Muscular dystrophy is when a person's muscles are more susceptible to damage than they would normally be. This means that, over time, their muscles become weaker and weaker. Though there are many different types of muscular dystrophy, the most common kind starts between ages 1 and 5, and is also most commonly found in boys. It's caused by a genetic mutation which can be inherited, but it can also be created in the mother's embryo. Almost everyone who has muscular dystrophy has to be in a wheelchair. However, the nature of the disease means that limbs often become locked in place. Second, we've got amyotrophic lateral sclerosis, or ALS. Originally called Lou Gehrig's disease, ALS is a neurological disease that kills the motor neurons responsible for moving our bodies with our voluntary muscles. This disease is fatal, and we don't really know what causes it. ALS begins when one has difficulty with unimportant hand or arm motions. For example, the ability to button a shirt or take notes. Other symptoms include cramps, tight muscles, and muscle weakness. There aren't any cures for ALS. However, recently, the FDA approved the first drug designed to combat ALS. This drug, called Riluzole, helps slow the damage of motor neurons, but it doesn't reverse the damage already done to motor neurons. Finally, we have myasthenia gravis. This is the weakness in the skeletal muscles in the body. It occurs when antibodies block the transmission between nerve and muscle at the neuromuscular junction, 
which is the place where nerve cells connect to the muscles they control. Though myasthenia gravis affects many voluntary muscles, it typically affects muscles that control eye and eyelid movement, facial expression, and swallowing. To maintain the health of your muscular system, you must eat the right foods. These include carbohydrates, which are stored in your muscles to use as energy, fats, which help the body produce testosterone, and proteins, which are the building blocks of muscles. Avoiding processed food helps, and eating several small meals as opposed to three large meals is much better for the muscular system. Furthermore, hydration is very important to the muscular system, and women should get 2.7 liters of water a day, while men should get 3.7 liters. While exercising is good, one should make sure to rest your muscles by taking at least one day off in between workouts. Recently, researchers in the United States found a new oral drug that may help with muscular dystrophy. The drug, called VBP-15, decreased inflammation like that of muscular dystrophy in mice. Furthermore, it doesn't have the harsh side effects of current treatments. Therefore, VBP-15 is a viable option for muscular dystrophy patients at some point in the future.